Hi guys, I'm Tiger. Today, I'd like to talk about self-diagnosis. I apologize if I sound weird and I went home from school early because I wasn't feeling well, but I'm feeling better now. Anyways, the points I'm going to make are mostly from my experience and purely my opinion. So we've set a popular anti-SJW LGBT account. I made a post speaking out against self-diagnosis. I got a ton of backlash and a ton of bullying. I ended up deleting the account because I couldn't take the bullying. The tolerant leftist telling me to kill myself and calling me A-list uh, isn't able to tell someone with depression to kill themselves. Anyways, I am getting off track. I had people telling me that they know they have anxiety and depression. These people are self-diagnosed, of course. Some of them said that they can't afford to go to a doctor, and I sympathize, I do. However, please don't go around saying, oh, look at me, I have anxiety and depression. It's so much more than just being sad sometimes. As someone with anxiety and depression, I hate seeing these bratty kids romanticizing mental illness. Because of them, we are not taken seriously. Maybe these kids are going through a bad time and are depressed. However, that's different from actually having depression. Depression isn't every once in a while. It's every day. Losing interest in activities you once enjoyed. It's lying down in your bed just staring at the ceiling. You don't want to socialize. You don't want to play on the computer. And you definitely don't want to go on Tumblr. Anxiety is not just getting stressed sometimes. It's having panic attacks over the most retarded things. Just yesterday, I was skiing. The trail was extra slippery because it had just rained. We were going down a, a trail. It's pretty, pretty um steep. And you know, I'm a level three skier, so and I would, normally I wouldn't be scared, but uh, you know, it was slippery. And I was in a spot where I could have turned back, but instead I just stood there crying and hyperventilating like an idiot. And Joel had to calm me down, and that, you know, then I ended up turning back and going down another trail. Okay, now that that's over with, I found an article um, on psychology today. When you self-diagnose, you are essentially assuming that you know the subtleties that diagnosis constitutes can be d very dangerous as people who assume they can surmise what is going on with themselves may miss the nuances of diagnosis. For example, people with mood swings often think they have maniac depressive illnesses or bipolar disorder. However, mood swings are a symptom that can be part of many different clinical scenarios, borderline personality disorder and major depression being two examples of other diagnoses. The clinician can help you discern whether you swing from normal to down or down to up, and by considering how long the mood swings last, the clinician may make the proper diagnosis. Here, the danger is that you may misdirect the cl clinician or even yourself. One of the greatest dangers of self-diagnosis in psychological syndromes is that you may miss a medical disease that masquerades as a psychiatric syndrome. Thus, if you have panic disorder, you may miss the diagnosis of hyperthyroidism or an irregular heartbeat. Even more serious is the fact that some brain tumors may be present with changes in personality or psychosis or even depression. Kelly, shut up. Sorry, it's my hamster. If you assume you have depression and treat it with over-the-counter preparation, you may completely miss a medical syndrome. Even if you do not want conventional treatment for depression, you may want conventional treatment for a brain tumor. So, not only does self-diagnosis hurt us, it also might hurt you. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe. Bye!